Okay, I know you can't see in there very well, but I'm quitting for the night. Anyhow, you'll be able to see in there tomorrow because we have a lot of windows in this room. I got the CPU cooler installed. The I like the coloration of all this going together really well. Up next, I got to start doing wiring and memory. Memory will go next. I'll do the memory next because the memory will be out of the way. I got to wire up the water pump and the fans for the CPU cooler. It's in there. It's installed well. I will be back tomorrow and we'll talk about what the next step is. But I'm going to put the memory in as soon as I get some of this wiring cleaned up and start running power. I can probably mount the hard drives, it just don't plug them in. That would be the easiest thing to do. Be back in a little while. Well, here it is the next day, as promised. And we do have some better lighting, so we can get a better look at what's going on in the case. Um, big black hoses with water cooling. The fan connectors I haven't connected yet. There is this cable too, and I know what this cable goes to, and if I have an extra USB connector, I'll probably use it. If I don't, I won't. This morning, I took the old solid state drive from the old computer and backed it up. So, this is ready to be wiped and installed in the hard drive cage over here somewhere. I don't think I need to remove this one so I can leave this optional cage in there. It would be nice because I have plenty of hard drives to fit in there. Okay? So I don't really want to remove it. But if I were to remove it, I'm pretty sure you just pull those. Yep, you pull those two down and that slides right out pretty easily. This weird looking contraption here, I did some reading last night. It's for mounting a fan and you can angle the fan. So it's blowing air in different directions. I don't think that's necessary for me. We've got plenty of case fans on this. It's fully case fanned and ready to go. I put the top back on it last night. You can see that, that comes loose. That's no bueno because that's the switches. But with the top on there, I don't think that'll be an issue. I really don't. No. Anyhow, you can see the water cooler is mounted up here. It's pretty solid. There is room for it. You, there just isn't room for the water cooler and fans on the top. If I were to try to do that, and I tried it earlier, it just doesn't work. So I'm putting the top of the case back on because I don't need access up there anymore. Okay? Well, there you go. I'm going to start uh, changing those two case fans. And once those are changed, then I'm going to start doing my some of my wiring and some of the other things. I'll talk to you later. I'll be back. Okay, I went out in the garage and I found some plastic screening. If you don't have it, you can buy it at a hardware store really cheap. These are those little magnets I was talking about. They're rare earth magnets. They're far enough away from any of the electronics that it should the magnet field from them shouldn't do anything. Plus, the metal will help block that magnetic field because the metal absorbs the magnetic field. So, I've got a screen on there. Just like we got a screen over here, removable, easy to clean, plastic, cheap, does what we need it to do. Those magnets are going to hold it good. Plus, once the fan starts sucking air, it'll help hold it up against air anyhow. Since it's screen, it's designed to allow air through. So, and that's a static pressure fan. So, any resistance there isn't going to hurt anything. Okay, so I've got screening all the way around on all the inlet fans. And there is no screening on the outlet fans, which is fine. We got the big vents in the back for the outlet fans. Okay? All right. So I'm going to start putting in... Well, actually, I'm going to connect the water cooler all the way. Back in a second. Okay. Now I have my debate. My debate is how do I connect the water pump? The water cooler itself came with this USB cable that hooks up to a USB header and you can control it that way but my motherboard has a water pump hookup and a spot for two CPU fans so the motherboard itself can control it and I'm more leaning towards that because the motherboard will set the fan speeds automatically for me I've already read up on it 
and it'll control the water pump. I just need to check up and make sure they're compatible. If they're compatible, I'll probably just hook it up to the motherboard. The motherboard has plenty of spots for case fans, so I can control them with the motherboard. I'm going to leave the face uh, case fans controlled by the uh, case. It has a three-way power switch on it, low, medium, and high. I'm just going to leave it that way. So let me read up on the motherboard and how it controls things. And then I probably won't need this connector at all. I am going to have to deal with the cabling because I'm not going to cut it off. I will just probably only need the water pump connector, okay, which is a three-pin connector up there. And that's a four pen. Yeah, this will be fun. Yep, it'll it'll work. Somehow it'll work. Okay, I'm gonna sit. Yeah, I see how it works. I'm gonna sit down and do some reading. I'll be back in a bit. Wrong remote. You can't control your camera with a TV remote. All right, I decided to hook the uh, water block with the pump and the fans that go with it up to the motherboard. The header for all of it's right up here at the very top. I took a zip tie and tied these two cables up along there and they're all going in the back of the case. I'm about to zip tie them to the back of the case so they don't go pulling back in on me because I want to keep this case really neat and really clean. I, if I change my mind, it's not very hard to change it. I just have to undo a couple of zip ties and rewire the cables and that won't take that much if I want to allow the software that comes with this to control it. I can do it that way but right now I think I'm just gonna let the motherboard control it. I don't think it'll hurt anything. Um, that way the motherboard can control these two fans at the top of the water cooler based on the temperature of the CPU. I'm just gonna leave it that way. Alright, I'm going to start wiring up I can put the memory in next. That's what I ought to do. Then I'll start doing all the jumpers for the CP, I mean for the motherboard, and get that done. I do have the case fans changed out. They're black now instead of, well, they were black, but they have clear blades on them because they're blue LED lit. So I've got three blue LED lit fans in here, and actually five. And yeah, let me get moving on this. We're getting near video card installation, and that'll be the fun part. Okay, I have the system memory installed. It took a little bit of reading to make sure it's right. Um, you, in, If you've got a dual channel kit, you install it on the furthest right one and the, well, the two gray ones. There are four memory slots on this motherboard. Two are gray and two are black. The two gray ones are the first channel. The two black ones are the second channel. It's really strange how you set the memory up. Make sure you check the memory, I mean the motherboards guide to make sure you put this in there correctly okay because if you don't put it in correctly you're not going to get you're going to get memory errors now i didn't go all out on that memory i saved 60 or 70 dollars and bought some uh slower memory this is 2400 memory i could have gone up to like 3200 or something like that but the price goes up significantly when you do that and well i'm going to be honest i didn't want to spend a lot of money on the memory yeah, I see all the way up to 3466. I could have done that, but again, it would have been another $70, $80 more for the memory. And I was looking for capacity more than I was looking for speed. So that's what I did. Okay? So up next is I'm going to hook up all these to the board. And I'm probably going to reroute most of them. Because most of the headers are down here, not over here. And they're coming out over here. So they're going to get moved and come up out of the bottom and connect up to the top. Okay? So that's what I'm up to next. I'll report anything goofy. The only thing I think is going to be goofy is these guys. These are those square pins I was talking about earlier for the uh, LEDs and stuff like that. I'll be back in a second. All right. I did connect the front panel connectors. I've connected the USB. I've connected all that. What I'm lacking at the moment is cable management and drives. I don't have any of the drives hooked up. I don't have the cable management done. I know I'm going to have to do cable management more than once. I'm going to clean this mess up right now because it's a little uh, crazy and spaghetti-ish in the back back here. It's not horribly bad. A few rounds with some... Uh, hmm, that's bad right there. A few rounds with some uh, 
zip ties and this will clean up really well. I'm gonna have to redo this right here because I don't like it and that's kind of a pain in the butt. But anyhow, um, the front panel connectors were actually pretty simple. The worst part about this case is it doesn't outline exactly what the uh, positive and negative on the hard drive light is. You have to look at the manual to figure that out. It's not a big deal. If you get it backwards, it's not going to short out the LED. It just won't work. You just got to unplug it and flip it. So if I got it backwards, I know how to take care of it. I'm going to start cleaning up the spaghetti mess back here before I start routing um, the SATA cables and the power for the SATA devices. Okay. I'm saving the video card for last because all I have left are the drives and the video card. This is going to be done in the next hour, hopefully. I will be back in a little bit and show you what's going on there. All right, everyone. There is cable management part one. Not the best in the world, but I think it looks better than it did, and I don't have cables everywhere. If we look at the other side of the case, let me pick that up and turn it real quick. You'll see it's really neat on this side. There's hardly any cable sticking out anywhere. I can't do much about these. They're going to be big and bulky like that. It's just how it is. What I'm going to do now is put the drives in. I'm going to route the cables. As long as there's no power to them, they won't run. So I'm going to be okay connecting the hard drive. I mean, putting everything in the case. Once the drives are in and the power's run to them, I can disconnect the power down here and just leave it unplugged so that it isn't an issue with the drives running. So let me get after that because then I just got a video card and this thing's together and I can go boot it up and start installing windows. All right, everyone, I ran out of black SATA cables and had to use a blue one. The good thing is on the other side of the case, you won't really see the blue one. I'll show you that in a second. Um, this is the cable mess I'm left with. These are all the power cables and SATA cables. So this mess needs to be cleaned up so I can put this back panel on the case. Once the back panel is on the case, the other side's done. So here, let me show you the other side real quick. I'm just getting where I can see what I'm doing on camera. So if I pick this up, she's gotten heavy because all the parts are in there. This side of the case looks pretty clean if you take a look at it. Oops, move the camera too much. There we go. If you take a look at it, the only real cabling issue I have are these two big water pipes. They could have been shorter and I would have been happy. But I know why they came that way. Now one other problem I ran into, and this one was really annoying. The DV, my Blu-ray player is kind of old. I'm going to want to replace it soon. And it'll be easy to replace. That's a good thing about this case but it sticks out further than the DVD player, which was causing issues with these water pipes. Okay? And I also had a right angle SATA cable plugged into the back of the top one, and I thought I broke it when I pulled it out, and I may have. So be careful when you're putting things together. That's all I got to say. So, like I said, all I got left is to clean up the cables on the other side, and I can take it down stairs, plug it into a monitor, and start working on it there. All right, everyone. I got it back together. Had some fun with the front of the case because, well, I was not paying attention to it. And let me raise the camera a little bit. There. I was not paying attention to it. And I hadn't removed this panel, so this wasn't sitting down right. That's more, I want to see what it looks like when it's done, sort of thing. Okay? I'm not going to pull this side panel back off, but I got all the wires tightened up really good. They're in there well. I just don't want to open it up unless I have to. And I just see that I have to because I didn't get one of the pins right at the top. So, let me go ahead and do that. Yeah, I got the tire, the wires in there. It is a mess in the back of this thing. There we go. So it's closing up fine. I'll go ahead and open it and let you see. There's the wiring. It's, again, a chicken wire mess. That's what I told the wife. I'm using the bottom drive bay down here to hide some of the wires with because, well, it's just not going together nicely in there. There's too many wires. 
but the side panel slides on and off really easily and if I ever decide to swap a drive that won't be too hard since everything's hardwired okay so all I have left now is put the side panel on this side and it's ready to go now the side panel on this side does have a cooling fan on it I've left the plastic on it because I want to be able to the anti-scratch plastic there's anti-scratch plastic on the inside and the outside I'm taking the anti-scratch off okay on the inside I'll take it off on the outside once I am done with the case and this one fan again is going to plug in here it's plugged in I got too much cable but that's okay way too much cable so that's going to be my only airflow impediment is that one cable right there put this up and she slides on like that well not completely on there don't you hate that when you're trying to do something live on camera there it is all put together put the two screws in and she's ready to go downstairs and do the first boot up and see what happens okay I'm hoping I don't get some sort of error code but you never know with these things because it is sort of fun to deal with it I also have to rewire all the USB ports downstairs because this thing has specific USB ports for specific things. It has one USB port for the keyboard, specifically for the keyboard. So all those crazy keyboard shortcuts you can program will work. It all feeds off one, assuming it's the keyboard there. I also need to check up on the um, video card manual and see where the default monitor plugs in. Actually, no, I don't because I'm plugging in two monitors and I can switch that in soft software and Windows. Okay, here's the back of the case. Again, this is really clean. Here's the video card ports. It comes with VGA and like, I think it only supports two video cards on itself. Okay, the video card itself. Well, this Odyssey is done. I'm gonna go downstairs and plug this thing in and get it to post. If I have any troubles, I'll come back and talk to you guys and let you know what I found.